Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. 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 Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. You know how we do. We always hey, keep it 100. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 podcast where we always keep it 100. I am your host, Harrison, and it is good to be back. I just want to take this time to thank everybody for the warm welcome receptions to last week's episode. It was good to be back. It was kind of getting my feet wet, just, you know, kind of doing like it's getting back in the gym, just shooting jumpers. So I know it was probably some miscues on that. I know it was probably. Some things wrong, but, you know, we're going to get it back in time. So I appreciate everybody for their welcome backs and listening to the podcast and just seeing me kind of, you know, jump back on the horse pause. <laughs> but we can go ahead and uh, hop back into uh, jump into this week's episode, uh, which we'll dive straight into this topic. So I want to get into what I saw this week and I was watching the Quiet on Set documentary. And it's basically just the documentary on what was going down for the set of the Nickelodeon experience for anybody that was being on the all that set or the Jake and Josh show, iCarly, anybody that just worked on the Nickelodeon studios. I thought it was a really good, interesting watch because a lot of people like myself were born in the 1990s, which was, in my opinion, the greatest era, at least if you were born between 1990 and I'll give y'all 1995. You know, we had uh, everything. And during that time, Nickelodeon was the pinnacle of what you wanted to, you know, be on because you had Cartoon Network. You had at its to insert to until a certain point, you had the Disney Channel, you had PBS and everything. But Nickelodeon was the only one that had actual shows with kids our age and kid produce shows. You had Salute Your Shorts, you had Alex Mack, you had Clarissa, Clarissa Explains It All. And then you had Double Dare, you had Legends of the Hidden Temple, you had, um, what was the show where um, you had to do the challenges? Uh, Guts. Yeah, so, um, and that's that was the one I wanted to be on so bad. That was supposed to be like American Gladiator, but it was called uh, Guts. And then they broke the mold and they created all that. And all that was supposed to be the kids version of Saturday Night Live. And that's where we got our Kenan Thompson's and our Lori Beth Denberg's and our Kel Mitchell's. And that's where basically you saw kids that wasn't too much older than us on their acting out, being funny. And then also, you know, that was, you know, to black people, that was our in living color because Saturday Night Saturday Night Live didn't have too many people of color doing you know sketch comedy and keenan and kale were iconic and i can't remember the black girl's name she wasn't on there long she was on there for like a season or so but um keenan and kale were our damon wayans and keenan ivory wayans our tommy davis Jr. Uh, tommy david um tommy what is it tommy davison and our um what's his name um uh, who plays and who played? Uh, uh, can't think of his name. I think of his name in a minute. Dale, David Allen Greer. They that was us. To us that was they were that was us because they were always they were funny, and you saw yourself in them. So that's what Nickelodeon was. And when you seen the Nickelodeon was all the shows were filmed in the Nickelodeon studios in Orlando, Florida. You seen that you had a chance to possibly be on TV. You know, they had the Nickelodeon uh, Kids Choice Awards. And, you know, growing up at that time, seeing, the, you know, all that stuff, it was just, it seemed uh, obtainable. And so to see this documentary come out, of course, quiet on set, you kind of have ideas like the harsh realities. As the older you get, as the older I've gotten, you've noticed that like being famous, now today's being famous is terrible because everybody has phones and it seems like everybody wants to, you know, see your downfall. But at that time, it seemed like, you know, being famous was it. It seemed like being famous was so cool. 
You wanted to like be a Hollywood star. You want to walk around, ride around in limos. You wanted to have people catering to you, fly around the world, be rich. That's when a million dollars was just life changing. Now it seems like a million dollars isn't anything to people. Like if you say, oh, I have a million dollars and they're going to say that's it. And that kind of just showed you the times that have changed. But, you know, you know, back to the documentary. Um, that's what Nickelodeon was. So the documentary centers around Dan Schneider and Ben Peck and a lot of other people that were basically predators or creeps around the kids that we grew up idolizing on these shows. Uh, the first episode, what kind of stuck out, of course, you know, you get on Twitter and I'll ruin everything. And, you know, I guess give y'all kind of a tidbit of what happened. And this right here just kind of, you know, puts it in perspective, just like seeing this kind of like ruins the whole fantasy of kind of what Nickelodeon was for everybody that was kids at this time. I mean, it's kind of heartbreaking when you see somebody as iconic as in the Nickelodeon spirits, Drake and Josh. And you see when I saw this and I was like, oh, man, I wasn't expecting I was expecting it to be like a girl like Amanda Bynes. Some of the people that you've seen kind of go off the rails that, you know, because you see Disney people like all the time. You, I actually thought this would have been a documentary about Disney people, because um, if you watch it, you know, you see the Lindsay Lohans and you see the um, Hannah Montana's. You see people on Disney Channel going crazy all the time. And then you see from the Nickelodeon side, just child actors or just who had horrible lives post that. And you just as, as you just expect sexual assault to happen and pedophilia to happen with and unfortunately you would expect it to be around girls because they hypersexualize little girls and so when i seen this and i seen it was drake bell it kind of caught me like whoa and it kind of you know so watching the documentary you know it starts off with dan schneider and it's just it kind of going back and he was just kind of this pig, this asshole, this dickhead. And he basically groomed. I don't want to say groomed. Well, one, I hate the word groom, but because I feel like y'all overuse it. But, you know, he just had this. He was this fat motherfucker who got a shot and he got power hungry. And the funniest part about that is when you kind of look at um him, he reminds me a lot of people in the Navy. I always say the Navy is for weak motherfuckers who couldn't make it in the real world. And so when they get into the Navy, they can make it because they can make a test or they can rank up and they finally get the power to control people. Dan Snyder was a little bit of the same. He was this fat guy, probably not attractive, look goofy. He got the power to control because he was talented enough to make iconic shows, which was all that. And he made, um, Keenan and Kale, I think the Amanda Bynes show. And so, you know, he got more power and he started to run with it. And then he started to exercise his power in a weird way. And so you watch it and you look at some of the shows and the jokes he would do, they were talking about like um he would do things that would be like, if you look at some of the stuff they were doing, like he would do things like if somebody sneezed, he would make like uh, the snot, but it would look like a cum shot. Or like he would over sexualize the girls or he would always do X, Y and Z to make like the jokes crass. And if you did anything or said anything against him, you were kind of ostracized out of the industry and you see some of the people and they were just kind of afraid to say anything to him. The women, he made the women split pay and he just made it an uncomfortable working environment. And he had so much power in Nickelodeon because all the shows that he had were over the top. Like they were they were blockbuster hits. And you hear some of these people just said they hated working for him. The women, especially, like I said, they were splitting pay. And he 
but he didn't do that to the guys and they had to prove themselves. And then he would do these th- weird things like with Ariana Grande. He had one scene where she had to like lick her feet or he had like weird feet fetishes every day on set. He getting massages by people. And it's just, it takes away from like my whole childhood. I wanted to be like on Nickelodeon. I wanted to be on all that. I thought I was funny. I wanted to see if I could make it on that stage, be, maybe be Keenan and Kel because they were iconic to us. And to see and hear these interviews of people who hated working in that environment, like it, it, it ruined a lot of their lives. It's, it's kind of sucks. And then you get to the Drake Bell aspect of it. And the guy that was messing with him was um, Ben Peck. He was his voice. He was like his dialogue coach. And it was it was another guy. His name was Jason something. But he was basically he got caught. He the only one who really did like real time. He did like I think he got like 16 years for basically he had like pictures on pictures and pictures of like girls. I think one point he was sending this one girl a uh, picture of him masturbating. And what's really sad about all of it is how Hollywood hides pedophilia. But honestly, if you can see what the Bill Cosby's and Jeffrey Weinstein's and the Robert Kelly's and stuff like that, you know, Hollywood freaky, freaky. I mean, shit, look at a Diddy party. I mean, are y'all really surprised all the stuff that kind of goes down what people will do to make a hit. And so um, just watching the stuff that happens, and so, you know, you get to the Ben Peck stuff because the Drake Bell stuff was a big, big thing. Um, he was about 15 when that happened. And the guy basically, the dad seen it early on. And the guy, they, I, you know, I'm not going to spoil too much of it. Uh, I feel like y'all should see it. But, you know, the guy basically was with him for a kid. He ostracized him and his dad because his dad was his manager. And then as soon as he got with working with his mom, the guy leaped in and kind of used that way as a way to get close to Drake. And he, as soon as he got along with him, he started like sexually assaulting him. Um, I think the first time he was like 15, he stayed over dude house and he woke up and he said he woke up to the dude sexually assault him. I'm assuming he was performing oral on him. And then at that point, it's like, he couldn't say anything because he feared or the guy said he would um, tell his parents to do something like he keep him out the the industry so he didn't say anything he said it happened a couple times and so it was just kind of sad and the worst part about it was one the support not even the support he got from a bunch of people but the fact that he only did 16 months in jail for this and he ended up working for disney on sweet life of zach and cody and he got the guy to confess what happened and I think what sucked about that was that it was no real time. All he had to do was kind of register as a sex offender and he got back to working in Hollywood. That's some shit that you shouldn't even work in Hollywood for. I think if you look at the black guy that was on all that, he ended up getting kicked off because his mom was too vocal about the stuff that was happening on the show. Like the one he was selling Girl Scout cookies and they made it seem like he was a drug dealer. And so he said it to Dan Schmidt and they end up kicking him out the second season. And this caused a rift between him and his mom and some of the stuff they were doing. He's still traumatized by today. But when you looked at it on TV, these were the people on all that. They seemed like they were ever so happy. And what kept Dan Schneider in power was like, he made iCarly. He made Zoe 101. He made all these shows that kept hidden that you didn't say anything to him. And it just kind of sucks because like I said, you wanted to go on the Kids' Choice Awards. You wanted to go. You wanted to be slimed. You wanted to be all this stuff. And you look at these stories like that shit was hell. And it takes you. You just kind of want to appreciate the normal life that you had. I think more and more older and older I get, it is fine being normal. I think it's kind of what I want to take away from that. Like it is fine being normal. It is fine making normal pay. It's fine not being the spotlight because these motherfuckers is weird and you watching this shit and you just seeing like what happened, like, you know, Drake Bell told that for the first time on, on that show, like what happened. And then at one point, what was even sad was like his dad and him was really close and his dad was watching the dude. And the moment that he pushed his dad away from that's when the dude sexually assaulted him. And like his, when he told, like he called the guy 
he called his dad and was like, hey, they got the guy. And he was like, man, I'm so glad that it wasn't you. And when he found out it was Drake, like you could just see the heartbreak on him. And then what one thing that kind of got me about that was I felt like people use this opportunity to um try to be try to bring up, I guess, that this I guess Drake Bell had a situation where he was texting a minor or something like that. I don't I didn't really go into all that. But I feel like what's one annoying thing about the Internet is people on the Internet act like everybody is perfect. And I'm really just tired of that. Like everybody has a past. I'm not sitting there saying what he did was appropriate or so. But I mean, I'm I know that people do stuff because they were traumatized. I don't know what happened between him and a girl. I'm sitting there saying that he was publicly sexually assaulted, which could lead to because he said he was a drinker. He said he did this. He said he was lying and stuff and keeping it to himself. You don't know what ramifications happen to that. So to bring up what somebody else does or how it affects their lives it's just kind of it's just kind of weird. You know, I say this all the time. Um, I said this last episode. Whenever somebody hit that girl, they bring up Chris Brown. Chris Brown can't even move on for his life because of something he has. And I feel like people always want to bring up other people's mistakes as if their life is perfect. Um, I feel like the the Quiet on Set is a great documentary. I feel like everybody should watch it. I feel like it does when you see your heroes type thing, you know, it does blow the bubble on what it was like. And what makes it funny was when I realized who Dan Snyder was, he was a producer on all that and all. And he was like the big goofy person. And when you look at like everything that happened on the Amanda show and all that, and when you realize that it was just some perverted fat dude making these adult inappropriate jokes, it's kind of like, it's not like when Ren and Stimpy and all that, when they were saying adult jokes, I guess it's kind of like when you look at the culture back then, it, you kind of got to decipher what was just the times and what was appropriate. And then who was in control? Like, yeah, some of the things were kids. Some of them, I don't even think like that still. And then some of it, like that was just a while. I guess to me, I feel like it's really strange. Y'all let this big fat ass man had this much control over y'all. I feel like I would have whooped his big ass, you know, and I feel like that's the only part that I don't get that y'all let this big man like y'all couldn't go back to normal lives. I get it. Y'all went to Hollywood and stuff. And that's probably the only part like this big fat motherfucker would not have been. He would not have been having control over me like that to where y'all scared. Maybe the women I can understand, like it's still a man at that point. But some of the dudes and shit who had fathers, this fat motherfucker would have seen me. And he's put out an apology for it, like nine minutes long, where he made it an uncomfortable situation. Um, but and I'm glad I did watch it because I thought he was the one who sexually molested and all that to Drake Bell. It was Ben Peck. But that 16 months is wild as fuck because he ended up confessing that he did this shit and he only got 16 months. But I encourage everybody to watch the Quiet on Set documentary. It's on HBO Max if you need it. If y'all need... um the information for log information just listen to the inf- the listen to the end of the video of uh, this episode and I, man fuck y'all i'm not giving y'all my login password go watch it yourself with your broke asses and go pay pay the five uh let's see what's our next topic <clears throat> so also you know i guess people don't like being in third place people don't like being bronze I mean, there's nothing wrong with being Mario Chalmers. There's nothing wrong with being whatever. But people like to chirp. So somebody, you know, got on their high horse and said something. So without further ado, you know, I'll let y'all hear a certain rapper's response to the champ. It's just big me, nigga. Bum. Nigga Prince outlived my jack, nigga. Bum. So Kendrick Lamar, K. Dot, whatever the fuck you want to call him, Mr. Nappy Ass Braids, decided to show that a hit dog will holler. I mean, you know. Same old, same old. I guess Kendrick got an album coming out. Good for him. You know, he seen Drizzy Drake being number one per usual, and he decided to let his musty ass come out and say something. I'm I'm appreciating that, you know? I mean, when you're at the top and you notice that obviously somebody always going to say something, and I mean, this, this is him. And honestly, it's funny. J. Cole won't say something to you. So... And J. Cole actually caught the stray, so I'm not going to sit there and say Kendrick didn't say nothing to J. Cole. But here go Kendrick Lamar doing what he do best, coming out here, saying some irrelevant shit to the top dog. And, I mean, it is what it is. 
So, hey, it is what it is. I, I, I don't really have nothing to say. I mean, I feel like, you know, this really all stemmed from he came out, he sat on the couch, he told his little therapy album, he listened to the crowd, he got upset, he let us know he had a gay auntie, we didn't care, he mad that we don't care about his stunkle, and now we got to hear you say some bullshit about Aubrey and we not here for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what the fucking vibes is Kendrick. Let me just, let me just keep it a band. All right. You're talking to the number one draft pick and the starter from the bottom league. All right. I got drafted number one. All right. I asked my man, Aubrey, he, he I'm, I'm going to speak for Aubrey. All right. It's loyalty. All right. I'm going to take one from your song. It's loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. All right. And I don't give a damn what you're talking about right now. We don't care. I already knew you could rap. I already knew you got bars. I already knew you got verses. That's cool. You still number three, motherfucker. We already got that. J. Cole, number two. Actually, you let J. Cole kill you because J. Cole's been body and shit. That's cool. You want to come out here and say something now? You must got something on the on the way coming out that's about to release. And that's the only reason that you felt like out of all this time that you feel like you should be coming out the woodworks to say something. Because you ain't said nothing in a long ass time. So why you got something to say now? This shit corny to me. Corny as fuck. The future and Drake thing, I'm not going to touch on because one, I rock with future. One, I rock with Drake. It must be something because they was really close. I need to see what all this is about before I sit there and comment on it. But the Kendrick Lamar stuff, please get off this man dick. All y'all want to do is sit there and find a way to peck at Drake because Drake is number one. The Prince outlived Mike Jack. They both dead. So that was stupid right there. Mike still got Mike still number one. So even if you want to say Prince lived out, outlive Mike Jack, you would still be saying Prince lived long enough to see that he was number two. All right. So you can take that um, blousey shit with the assless chaps and sit your purple rain ass on to the side and tell me when the doves cry. All right. Everybody want to sit out there and do what K dot is and bring up all this nonsense. That's, that's fine. All right. Because I'm going I'm to be real with you, pimp. Ain't nobody giving a fuck about none of that butterfly talk that you out here doing. It it is what it is. I just feel like, like I said, when you come out here, you're doing all this. You've had all this time. You dropped control like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. You ain't did nothing since. You you had your little line. Y'all ain't rapped nothing. Your hottest song is Poetic Justice with Drake on there. So even your hottest song right now got Aubrey on it. So that alone is nothing for you to say like it your hottest song got Aubrey drake graham on it that it by itself lets you know that you ain't even number one on your own fucking song drake is so just just be humble like you said be humble my nigga that you was in the goat conversation not even goat you the top three but we know you number three and there's nothing wrong with being number three at all like i i don't get why that you fit chris bosh was number three he got a ring you get in the ring my nigga like d'angelo russell's number three on the team right now you know like i don't get why you feel that you is cool like you not that's nothing wrong with that i'm not gonna take away your rapping skill i'm not gonna take no credit for that you saving the west coast we thought it was gonna be the game but you saving the west coast as it is you know like nip ain't around you holding it down for that like be cool with what you are you know you still riding around with some rusty ass car you never look clean you your hair is never done so i mean like be 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 good that everything that you've done has been put into your craft but like stop this this rigmarole that you keep trying to do like we get it you are what you are and there's nothing wrong with that and but this constant shot at the title like Drake not even doing them type of bars no more. And I remember when your album came out and it was talked about for an hour and a half and you was supposed to be that guy like K dot yet Drake dropped an album and it was ass, but it was talked about for way longer than that. And then he dropped another one and it was a shit. And then he dropped the album with 21 and they complain about it. And then he dropped another one. So like, I, I, I just, you know, it's popular, whatever you want to call it is you, you, your stuff has no longevity. You know what I'm saying? Like you, we, we get what you, we get what you're saying. And the people that really got to come defend you is like the top dog people, you know, but at this point, why are we arguing when y'all are it for us? Like, you know, like y'all three, whatever. And at this point, honestly, I'm speaking because I know I got Drake ranked 
and somebody gonna have you rank where they got you but y'all three is y'all three i don't really get why let's just put all three of y'all at the top i don't get why we keep having these back and forth at this point just square the fuck up and go fight the man i don't know why drake and future are fighting but i don't get why all of a sudden that you feel like you need to come say something they set this line a long time ago so what's what's your real problem put some music out if you don't want nobody to sit there and say that take takes take some line out now travis scott wanted that album out metro booming future and then kendrick lamar and then for what i seen that somebody said like rick ross said something so i don't know what drake did but he obviously got people heated but what i do know is when y'all go aubrey like that then that's when that man come out there and start dicing people up that's when that man starts sniping so we might get some of the best work from aubrey that we've ever heard so i appreciate it i don't like the fact that you know pluto and drizzy drake rogers is done i don't like that at all but hey we finally gonna get some albums out because i'm tired of the bullshit music that has been coming out um you know it's up but i'm also tired of uh kendrick coming out with all these cerebral palsy ass raps and all these schizophrenic voices that he want to do it's almost like listening to a male Nicki minaj coming out there i mean like i said it's nothing really for me to diss about it because he can rap only person i know that's out there being moist and butthurt at the same time is Pusha t soggy scalped ass because i know he wanted to jump on the track and this drake wet booty ass boy because i know he anytime that he can come out there and try to add on some tracks and and dick ride away with somebody slandering drake i know that's what he want to do and i'm pretty sure kanye want to sit out there and say something with that pl aluminum foil platinum bullshit in his mouth but other than that like i said i think it's just corny i think that you know you two cemented in the game to be saying something and i feel that for you to be dropping every winter solstice every groundhog's day every um leap year and then coming out and saying something like what are we gonna do is we gonna get consistent music let me know it is what it is but i mean the song was nice the i like the you know the the beat i like that y'all use hard body shout out to wayne um y'all just better hope that one day he don't be like hey wheezy let's just silence these niggas out because wayne been in his bag i don't know if people been noticing like wayne has been in his bag lately um so if he decides to be like me and wayne gonna take over it is what it is so you know that's my take on that whole ordeal um kendrick i expected better to you from you uh i hope i bet not see no album dropping i really don't know why you want to go at jermaine because he got his album about to drop so you know he can definitely use this for press and you know future i really need to know what happened i really hope it ain't over no pillow talking shit but hey you know pluto needs something i really wish you would have would have went at russell wilson for raising your son the way you've gone at drake but hey i guess fuck these kids right so hmm. i did want to give a shout out to uh desi banks real quick for this funny ass video he did i really just want to say it because um a lot of stuff that's been out there has been really funny uh that he does but this one in particular because i feel like you know when i seen this i was like oh, okay so we are all living the same life it's funny mainly because like i said we all live the same life the entrance alone with the phone the flip phone razor the keychain uh necklace the 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 sweatbands on the um the neck this was days in parties house parties all that this shit was funny as fuck mainly because going out now like i don't know if we all tired ourselves out but this is why the 90s was like the best the best era i just watched the freak nick documentary and like if you see like this is kind of like the last of the era i wasn't doing this portion with the train and all that type of stuff that wasn't me i didn't partake in none of that still funny because i know what happened but anybody know um especially born in like between 90 and 90 1990 and 93 we was in school around that pretty ricky era so hotel party days and party um this part always funny because whenever skies the limit came on or set it off came on y'all was fighting but this made me laugh i had to show this out big shout out to desi banks because like i said bro we all live the same life which makes all this shit really funny to me uh I'm just thinking about it now kind of going out to clubs if you really kind of see it everybody just really on their phones and everybody don't enjoy the moment no more but it was like a vibe like when you when you um 
that was funny. It was just kind of like a vibe being like at those uh, hotel parties and stuff, like them days in parties when they would just, the lights come off, go off, <clears throat> and then you would just hear, free me, baby. Oh, yeah. Or Pretty Ricky came on and Juicy came on. And that's why my ass got freaked out then. I'm, that would be lights go off and be like, all right, y'all. Find the corner, find the girl, and the lust in your eyes. I know you can't fight it. And that walk in your vibe makes me want to try it. And them like spinning wheels. I love the way she ride it. She's a stallion, babe. And I know, come on now. Man, that's why we freaked out now. Like I said, you go to the clubs now. Juvenile, come on. I either see niggas standing still, niggas getting hyped like it's nothing. So, like... Before everything kind of got like so sensitive and everything, this is just a fun time. Like we was just vibing, like with no responsibilities, no care, no nothing, no oversensitivity. And so this is why it was just funny because when you in like your own little spirit, little bubble, you think it's just y'all. And then when you see, like I never met Dusty Banks a day in my life, and to see that a bunch of us live the same life, it's <clears throat> it's just really funny. You see, we all grew up the same. A lot of our um, humor and stuff like that is the same because we all experience the same thing. So I just want to get a shout out, you know, because I thought that was funny. I feel like uh, a lot of us remember those days in parties, those hotel parties, those teen club parties before we can get in with actual IDs. And uh, we all remember those fights, those nights, and uh, always telling our mama to drop us off here. Everything going to be cool or driving around with somebody. I know if you're in Nashville, everybody remember going to a word party or doing something like that. So, uh, and then if you, uh, everybody remember going to a pressing party by Antioch, everybody remember <clears throat> going, um, just doing something in general. So, uh, yeah, we're going to end it right there. I appreciate everybody checking in. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. If y'all got anything you want to tap in with, just hit the comments, DM, email at the 8 more than 92 podcast at gmail.com. And we're going to keep it going like we is. I appreciate everybody for rocking with us. And peace. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. You know how we do. We always keep it 100. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah.